All right, everybody. I have looked everywhere for videos on the Axis M200 mini bike. And you see Coleman, Coleman, all the other ones, all the small engine mini bikes, but none of them actually talk about the Axis very much. And so far, I am impressed with this thing, how modifiable it is. You know, the seat is very comfortable. This storage compartment is actually very useful. And I have, you know, a flashlight, some tools in there, and I threw some paper towels in there just to pad everything so I don't listen to it rattle. But this thing has been awesome to me so far. My biggest issues were how slow it was, which, yes, I know, straight out of the box, a mini bike is not going to be fast. But there are a lot of videos on what to do to these things, but I really had to dig to find, you know, the free, out of the box, what you can do to make this thing a little bit faster. So I'm gonna talk about those a little bit, you know, what I've done, how much I've gained. So first off, I have the box off this, but just to get a little better look. So there's a box on top of this and you just take the nut off the top and then you'll see this, take that little wing nut off of it. And then if you want, which for what I'm gonna show you, you're gonna wanna take this off, these two screws right here. But the first thing I did, if you look right here, you can see where I bent off the little flap that this screw rides on. So now, usually that flap would hit right about there. I took that out and I think I gained from 20 miles per hour, maybe 22, 23. The next thing I did, which this is a video that was kind of hard to find, not many views. So I hope this one gets out there a little more to everyone that owns these. And I think this applies to Coleman's as well. But this spring, the stock spring on the throttle cable, whenever you compress it, originally it's gonna compress and it's gonna hold your throttle from coming all the way in. So what I actually did is I loosen this throttle cable screw, which holds it in place when you turn the throttle. And I pulled the throttle cable out, took the spring off, and then I think I clipped uh, right here at the top on this side, where you see those coils that are real close together. I think I clipped those and one more. Now, I would just clip these top two first. That way you're not losing too much spring because who knows, maybe not all these springs are the same length. So I just clipped this top two on the uh, end, but on this side, which it doesn't really matter, you can just flip the spring later. But what that does is if you look with that flap gone, and my spring shortened, it still pushes the throttle body all the way open or closed whenever you're at idle. But whenever I pull my throttle, it almost touches that bracket down here. I mean, barely touches it, which is what you want because the video I watched, the guy said he had his too close and over time, that little, this little bracket under the spring, that's gonna hit this bigger bracket over here and it can actually bend over time and kind of get a sticky throttle. So I just worked with my spring until it's barely 
barely touching that and I shouldn't have to worry about that bracket right there bending when it hits that. Um, I actually haven't drove it since I did that because this is the last thing I did. But everyone knows about this spring right here. And you've probably seen the zip tie method, you know, put a zip tie in this end, loop it through, put the top of a zip tie on that side and just compress that spring a little bit, not let it open. Well, I really should take the gas tank off for this, but hopefully you can see it. So down here, if you take the gas tank off, there's a little uh, metal arm right there. That's connected to your governor. So what I did, instead of putting zip ties through here that are gonna get hot and brittle over time, I took this uh, arm that runs to that metal governor arm right here and what I did is drill a hole as far over as I could. You're gonna see a crease on that arm where it was stamped out. I aimed right for that crease in line with the other holes. And what that does is now when I turn my throttle, it's still gonna let the governor work. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the plastic governor if you leave it in there and you have the zip ties too tight over time it can crack and ruin your whole engine what this does is actually lets the governor work but just barely so it's still going to be able to move in there it's not going to get bound up or whatever but it just barely engages it and you don't have those zip ties that are going to get brittle over time and break um so far like i said i didn't i haven't drove it with this spring shortened but cutting that flap off maybe two or three miles per hour so 23 when i moved this as far over as i could on that arm under there uh i was hitting 28 and now my goal is 30 just straight out of the box, free mods, no money spent, trying to hit 30. So I should, with this spring shortened, I should hit 30 because, like I said, I test drove it after I did this, and it was 28, and now my throttle uh, can open up way more now that that spring is out of there which if it moves too far and you start seeing flames shoot out of your exhaust, it means you're getting valve float and your governor isn't uh, activating and lowering your RPMs enough and your valve springs actually can't take the load. So you're sending fuel out that's burning out of your exhaust. If that happens which it shouldn't if you drill that other hole. Let's just say it happens, you start getting valve float. Just take where I drilled that hole and put it to the next hole closest, and you might lose a couple miles per hour, but you're going to save your engine, and in the long run, are you really going to be able to tell from, you know, 28 miles per hour to 30? No, not really. And I would much rather get my money's worth out of this engine before in the future, maybe I Predator 212 swap or another small engine, you know. Uh, next, what I'm planning to do eventually, you know, not anytime soon, because for right now I'm happy with it. But I'm going to upgrade the carburetor, new air filter. Uh, if I want to put a torque converter on this, which I want to do eventually i'm gonna to have to you know put the spacers under the engine and what i've read 
is you might have to take the heat shield off the exhaust, which isn't that big of a deal because that thing gets so hot anyway. Having that heat shield on there, it's going to burn you regardless. Or what I might do is just order, you know, an aftermarket exhaust system. So that's kind of everything I've done so far. Uh, I need to adjust the seat springs if possible because I rode it and my back was killing me. But uh, other than that, I'm loving it. You know, easy to maintain. I think it takes, uh, you know, I bought a little quart of oil and it takes about half that to fill the oil one gallon of gas in it and I've ridden it maybe 10 hours so I need to change the oil out for the first time as in the manual but yeah so far I love it and I would definitely recommend it this uh fake carbon fiber finish actually looks pretty slick on it oh and this bulb Compared to the Coleman's, this bulb's actually an LED, which if you can see right there, it's only a one side LED. So it's only shining the light up here. And you can't really tell when you're riding, but I'm probably gonna swap that out for a 360 LED just to get a little more light out of it. And for some reason, I have this as far back as I can uh, shining up, but I might take a drill or something or my Dremel and I might extend these. There's uh, slots back here where you can adjust this. I might extend them back so I can push this light a little further back so I can see more out ahead of me because I was riding through the field the other night and I mean, the light shines straight at the ground, so you can't really see uh, big holes and whatnot, you know, 30, 40 yards ahead of you, which isn't that big of a deal. But for me personally, I just like to see it a little further. And uh, I might order a uh, crossbar attachment right here. And then I might see I don't know what the uh, output for electricity off the engine is, but if possible, I might put a crossbar here with a uh, light bar and see if that would work, if the engine can put, the, put out that much electricity, which I'm sure at higher RPMs, it might be able to. So we'll see, and uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, just comment and I can try to get a hold of you or maybe even send you like another little video of how to do everything. I might come back and visit. Oh, don't mind the Crocs. I might uh, come back and make another video on how to actually do that arm because it's really not that hard, but it the way I explained it might not have been the best and I should have just took the uh, fuel tank off anyway, but I hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, that's the Axis M200 from Lowe's.